Dr. Fizz, Theoretical Physics, Convolution. Convolution is a rather difficult subject, so in this section we prepare the way by learning again about the RC circuit from introductory physics. We're going to use this in our understanding of convolution. The RC circuit consists of a battery and a resistor and a capacitor for the charging phase and then you remove the battery and the capacitor discharges. So the voltage for the battery V sub naught is shared with the resistor and the capacitor. So the voltage here going from ground up plus V naught must be equal to the two voltage drops coming down the other way. So sometimes they write this V sub zero minus VR minus VC equals zero. We're going to simply write it this way, that the battery voltage here is equal to the sum of the two voltages across the circuit elements. Ohm's law states that the voltage across the resistor is given by IR. If you increase the battery strength, you get more current. If you have a constant voltage and increase your resistance, then the current drops down. Ohm's law, strictly speaking, says the resistance here is constant for a resistor. Now that's going to be true as long as you don't hit it with too much voltage and burn a little resistor out. For the capacitor, we have voltage that's proportional to the charge that begins to appear on this capacitor as we charge it up. Now the capacitance, capital C, is a measure of how much charge can be stored on the capacitor. So for a given voltage, if you can store lots of Q, that means we want the C rating to be high. So Q, lots of Q divided by a big C is then a constant V sub C. So you can think of that as charging a capacitor, how much charge can you get on there, and C is equal to Q over V sub C is another way of looking at it. So here we have these two equations, the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the capacitor, and when we plug those in we get our nice circuit equation here the voltage for the battery is shared here with the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the capacitor. Now we imagine at time t equals zero we flip a switch and close a circuit when there is no charge on the capacitor initially. So that means Q at point t equals zero is zero and then when you flip the switch there's a rush of current, the charge has an hasn't got a, ch a chance to charge up the capacitor at t equals zero, so you still have no voltage here initially, and the voltage across the resistor, see all of it's across the resistor, but as the capacitor charges up, then the current is going to decrease, decrease, and when the capacitor is fully charged, there'll be no more current. So that means when you go to long times, we'll say t is equal to infinity here, the reverse happens. You have the voltage across the capacitor at full value, and you have no voltage across the resistor because there's no current anymore. So let's review that again. At time t equals zero, there's voltage across the resistor equal to V sub zero, and there is no voltage across capa the capacitor. As T then heads to infinity, what happens is you get the voltage across the resistor being zero and the voltage across the capacitor being V sub zero. And that happens rather quickly in practice um, or it could happen over several seconds or perhaps a minute. You don't really have to wait of course to infinity to see the charge you know get fully charged up on that capacitor. 
What we want to do is the discharging phase where we have no battery now and the charge on the capacitor is going to discharge, go around the circuit the other way and when you get neutral charge things are balanced. Now engineers like to think of the positive as flowing but the chemist will tell you it's the electrons, see the electrons here that flow in the wire so really the electrons will go the other way but we like to keep the plus sign in terms of the direction like this because then the equations come out nicer with the math. Remember your current is your change of charge per time. It's how much charge moves by per time. So that's a derivative that goes into our equation and without having that battery there we don't have that V naught anymore over here. We just have zero so that means here that's all you have IR plus Q over C has to be zero since there's no battery here. Now that's a differential equation that we can solve fairly easily. We do the old uh, separation of the variables here. So we're going to uh, put R D Q D T on the one side and then we'll have on the other side a relative minus sign here because we're basically bringing one of these to the other side of the equation. And then we get the Q with the DQ and get all these constants over here with the dt which is only doesn't even have a time variable in there so we'll give it all the constants. Notice RC appears together which is characteristic of RC circuits and then we integrate and we're going to get the natural logarithm here of the charge. We integrate from the time t equals zero to some arbitrary time t and that goes along with the charge at t equals zero, the initial charge on the capacitor, and here then some uh, final you know, time which is arbitrary so we have a nice function. Let's just uh, point out something here that we note that when the charge was fully on that capacitor from our previous problem up in here, we see that all the V naught was with that C. So the charge, when it's fully charged, is C V naught. So in the second problem, when we discharge, that's going to be what we start with. So C V naught is the initial charge, and we're discharging. So we then get the equation, the uh, Q of T is Q of zero times this exponential, because here you have that logarithm, and when you exponentiate both sides, then you'll get this nice effect that we could put in that initial charge now, that C V naught, and have this equation. Notice that R C must have units of time because with these exponentials you always have to have a dimensionless quantity when you're doing physics or engineering. Here's a summary. You have a neat uh, case here where the discharge follows that nice exponential and as a practice problem it would be nice for you to do the differential equation to formally get this solution which you could pretty much guess that you start out here with no charge so you have this equation where if you have t is equal to zero you have one minus one and then as t goes to infinity you gotta get that c v naught so after doing this first case and seeing this exponential decay you could kind of guess that you would expect you know, to get something like this, but it's good practice mathematically to work it out in detail. We'll see you in the next section as we proceed to unravel the mysteries of convolution using an RC circuit.